Hi guys and welcome to this, our video on geometric sequences. My name's Darren, Maths Guru, and it's an honour to actually have you watch the video. Because you're probably my only viewer. No, well maybe there's three. My mum, my dad, and you. What I'm going to do is go through the work here for the General Maths course on geometric sequences. But before I do that, can you do me a massive favour? Yes, it's sad and it's a little bit desperate. Can you just subscribe to my YouTube channel? Doing these videos, I sit in a room and very much talk to myself. And it's a little bit weird. A little bit lonely. And I'm not really sure that people actually watch my content. So if you subscribe, if you need to, turn off notifications. That just lets me know that you've watched. It lets me know that it's actually worth doing this. Leave a comment as well, because YouTube apparently like comments. Who doesn't like a good comment? Um, and follow me on this brand new thing. Not sure you've heard of it, but TikTok. I think I'm saying that right. Now, I always start with the learning objectives, and that is what is behind me. So by the end of this lesson, I want you to know what a GP is, understand the difference between an arithmetic sequence and a geometric sequence. What do you mean you don't know what an arithmetic sequence is? Of course you do. We've done a load of videos on this. You don't know where to find them? Mathsguru.com, where it's free to sign up. And all the notes and the things I write on behind me are all downloadable from there. ker -ching. All right, know how to use your CAS, know to find the common ratio. These are all things that we're going to do in this particular video. Now, in the last few videos, as I've just said, what are we going to do? Well, we looked at what an arithmetic sequence was. And that was a sequence where you effectively added the same number to go from term to term to term. So if I had the numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, I always do the two times tables. You think I'd try something else. Uh, we basically can see that in each of these, we're going up by 2. All right, So that's beautiful. That's an arithmetic sequence. We don't just have to add on. We can also take away. So 10, 7, 4, 1, negative 2, for example. They're all going down by the same number. They are arithmetic sequences. And they are linear. If we had to draw these on a graph, we would see they are linear and a beautiful straight line. Having done adding and taking away between terms, it makes sense then that what we're going to do now is deal with geometric sequences. And what is a geometric sequence? Basically, it's where you multiply to get from one term to the next. Now, you'll notice I don't say divide because we actually don't divide. In our head, we'll go, ah, oh, it's a divide by two but we're going to turn that into something else in a moment. But we always just multiply. So again, I've got an itchy nose. If we look at this sequence there, we've got the numbers 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and so it goes on. Now, what does that mean? That there is my geometric sequence. Why? Because to go from there to there, I'm timesing by 2. To go to there, I'm timesing by 2. To go from there to there, I'm timesing by 2. Now, you may have already wanted to check, is it an arithmetic sequence? Well, we could turn around and say, well, that's definitely plus 2 there. But this one there would be a plus 4. And because those numbers there are both different, it cannot be an arithmetic sequence, right? So if to be a sequence, particularly for arithmetic or geometric, what we do from term to term to term has to be exactly the same. That's sort of how you check, right? Now, there's no common difference. But what we actually have is something called a common ratio. Now, what's a common ratio? Well, a ratio is basically a way of multiplying or dividing. We'll leave that one there. All right? Now, in arithmetic sequences, we had D for our common difference. Didn't we? Yes, yeah, so common meant the same difference because we're adding on or talking, taking away. We don't use D in this. Why? Because Barry is a pain in the butt. He's come up with the letter R. Oh, okay, now that's cool because R stands for ratio. And later on, when you get to another section of this course, you'll know that R stands for Pearson's correlation coefficient. Yeah, phased out already? Me too. Now, R common ratio, and it is just a number, okay? So, for example, a common ratio of 2 would describe that I'm multiplying by 2 to get from term to term to term. So, for this sequence here, we exactly say that R equals 2. Now, although I'm writing on the notes now, you can download them from mathsguru.com and you can write all over them because there's nothing to say that I'm actually going to make any sense. But if you're allowed to use a summary book, why not download them, cut them up, put in your summary book what you are going to need here to try and help. All right, so common ratio is what we multiply from to get from term to term to term. But we never divide. Now, if we look at the sequence I've given here, what do we have? 100. I'm going to write it vertically in this situation, 25. Well, you might turn around and say, well, to go from there to there, we're dividing by two. And actually we are, but our common ratio can never be divided by. We have to find a different way. So when we divide by two, what's that the same as? Aha. Uh -huh. Well, if you remember, we can keep 
change and flip. So I'm going to change the divide into a times and I'm going to turn the two into, that's it, one on two, otherwise known as a half. And you're going to say, way up, where'd the chuffy neck the one come from? Well, remember that any whole number, so the number two is the same as two on one. Three is the same as three on one. Ten is the same as, he says, writing ten on one. So any whole number, you can divide by one. And so when I've got two on one and I flip it the other way, I get a half. So in this situation with the numbers I've got there, I would never say that my common ratio is divided by two. It is actually my R in that situation would be a half because I'm multiplying by half. And again, if you don't believe me, if I fire up my calculator, ignore the fact that it's got something on there. If I do 100 times by 0 0.5, what do we get? We get 50. And so that makes life just a lot, lot easier. Where do you think we're going to try and trick you on these type of questions? I still don't know why, why I think that you're actually going to respond to me. Maybe I'm just listening to things in my head. On an exam. Absolutely, we're going to try and trick you on an exam. Now, how do you find the common ratio? Well, if you remember back to arithmetic sequences, if I had the numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, so long as I took any two consecutive numbers and subtracted them with the second term minus the first term or the third minus the second, I will get my common difference. So in that situation, if I did 4 minus 2, I got 2. If I got 6 minus 4, I got 2. If I get 8 minus 6, I got 2. And they are all the same. So we have an arithmetic sequence. How do you do it for geometric sequences? Pretty much the same thing, but because we want a ratio, what I do now is I take my second term and divide it by my first term. All right, so again, if we go back to uh, the number sequence, what should we have? 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. If we take two of these terms and we do the second one divided by the first one, so if I do 4 divided by 2, what do I get? I get 2. If I do 8 divided by 4, I'll do it here. If I do 8 divided by 4, what do I get? I get 2. So I'm just taking 8 and 4. If I did 16 divided by 8, I would get 2. Now again, why do we do this? Because in maths, we're going to try and trick you. So if I look at this sequence here, and I've got the numbers 1 and 4, I could do 4 divided by 1 gives me 4. ka -ching. Do we think that's our common ratio? It might be. But what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to look at my next two terms. So I'm going to do 9 divided by 4. And as far as I'm concerned, that is never going to be equal to 4. And notice what I did there. I did an equal sign with a line through it. That means not equal to. And so in that situation, that would not be a geometric sequence. And of course, if you've seen those numbers before, you'll actually know they are the square numbers. All right, so let's do some examples. Lots of examples. Thank you very much. Find the common ratio. And the examples are from the Cambridge textbook. Thank you so much, Cambridge, for allowing me to use your examples. You guys seriously, seriously rock. Really, really grateful. All right, so find the common ratio in each of the following geometric sequences. Three, so I'm going to write them out again. Three, 12, 48, uh, 192. Well, let's test our first two numbers. What have we got here? So now I'm going to do 12 divided by three, which when I went to school was 12. Three, six, nine, 12, it was four. Now, you've got to check another pair of numbers. So I'm going to check the next two consecutive numbers. I'm going to do 48 divided by 12. 12, 24, 36, 48. Yes, I'm using my fingers. Those numbers are the same. ka -ching. I have my common ratio. So for that question there, my R would be 4. Okay, so far? Awesome. Let's do the next sequence. 16, 8, 4, and 2. All right, now again, it's not divided by 2. Remember, we take two consecutive ones and divide them. So 8 divided by 16. When I put that into my calculator or just in my head, I know that's going to become a half, but we have to test the next two. So 4 divided by 8 is also a half. And so in that situation, this is a geometric sequence with an R being a half. I'm multiplying by a half or dividing by 2 each time. Identifying a geometric sequence. How are we going to identify a geometric sequence? Well, I've told you for it to be a geometric sequence, the common ratio has to be exactly the same. So what have we got? I've got 2. 10, 50, 250. Let's check these two numbers here. So I'm going to do 10 divided by 2, which when I went to school was 5, and you would argue I'm still in school, which is really quite sad when you look back at my life. Anyway, let's look at the next two numbers. I've got 50 divided by 10, which gives me, oh, also 5. Now, because those two are the same, and I could go on and check if I wanted to, because 250 divided by 50 is also 5, this there 
is a geometric sequence. Genius! Let's look at the number one. 3, 6, 18, 36. Rightio, let's look at two consecutive numbers. 6 divided by 3 is equal to 2 on a roll. All right, let's see in the next one. 18 divided by 6. 6, 12, oh dear, that's 3. <sighs> no. So in that situation, that would not be a geometric sequence because the con ratio is not the same. 2 and 3 aren't the same. Well, not when I went to school. Now, we love, 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 love being able to do this type of stuff on the CAS. So if I fire up my CAS, what I'm going to do here now, for those of you who are using the ClassPad, the functionality is pretty much the same. So hopefully you'll be happy with me using the TI Inspire. If in any videos I need to show you the difference within the calculators, I promise you I absolutely will. Now, how are we going to be able to do this to generate the first six terms of a geometric sequence? So we've got the one, three, nine, and 27. So those are the first four terms. I want the first six terms. Well, to be able to do any of this, if you remember, I need to know A, which is my first term. That's the number one. And now we're going to say R is equal to, well, let's look at this one, three divided by one, which is three. And I'm just going to test is nine divided by three, three. It is. So there we go. So I've now got my first term and I know to go from term to term to term. I'm going to multiply by three. Rightio, calculator. So let's insert a list and spreadsheet. What I'm going to do here, so remember, you always put the titles in here first. Term, and let's say number. He says trying to spell. We wanted six terms, so let's put the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. He says bringing his computer a little bit closer. Now, how can I do this? Well, I can do this in my head. I can go 1, 3, 9, 27. Now, I don't know about you, I do not know how to do 27 times 3 in my head. And you're going to say, use a calculator. And I say, I can't, because it's a calculator. Anyway, so actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and try and use something from my previous videos to make life a little bit easier. Ooh, are you ready? Now, again, if you're using the class pad, I know that there's actually a sequence generator on there, which is awesome. Um, hopefully you guys know how to use that. If you don't, ask your teacher. If not, I'll try and put something in a later video. But let's see, where do we go here? What I'm going to do is say equals. Why? Because I want a formula. And I want to take the previous number, which is in B1, and I want to times it by 3. And I hit enter, and you're going to go, it didn't do anything. Yeah, it did. I go back out to the number because I want to copy that formula. And if you notice down at the very bottom here, he says highlighting it, you'll notice that that formula has been saved. So I'm going to go into there, I'm going to go menu, I'm going to go data, and I'm going to go fill. Who's fill? I no idea. Just a joke. Bad joke. I didn't say they were good. All right. And then I'm going to, so you notice the dotted line goes up and down. All I'm doing is hitting the up and down button on my calculator. And I, when I want to stop copying that down, I hit enter and lo and behold, out comes all of the answers I need. So I've got 13927. What's my next one? It's 81. And then 243. Found my six terms of my geometric sequence using the CAS. Now, wouldn't it be nice to know what it looks like? You're going, no, not really. I'm going, come on, live a little. <laughs> live on the edge. No, control and what am I gonna do? Control and dock, and in this situation, I'm gonna do a data and statistics. Because again, I want to look at what this is. And your calculator is gonna put those dots randomly on the screen because it really doesn't know. But it does say down the bottom here, click to enter or add a variable. Well, I want the term number and on the bottom, and I'm going to put the number number up the side and pretty animation. And what do I notice? Yes, it curves up. That there shows me our sequence is geometric. When it has that nice, beautiful, smooth curve, then we know our sequence is geometric. It's growing bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It's not linear. No. Nah. Right. So let's turn the calculator off for a moment. And again, these notes are all downloadable from Maths Guru. Right, example, let's have a look at graphing a geometric sequence. Let's see what we come up with here. Consider the sequence 2, 6, and 18. Find the next term. All right, well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look and say, right, well, what is my common ratio? My common ratio is 6 divided by 2, which is 3. I'm just going to check this one here. 18 divided by 6, 6, 12, 18 is 3. So for this sequence there, I know that R is equal to 3. And I know that A is equal to 2. Now, you're going to say, why am I writing this down? It hasn't been asked in the question. Ah, maybe it will do in a later video. Right, so find the next term. My common ratio is 3. So my next term is going to be 18 times by 3. Cool, how am I going to do that? 
Well, it's a calculator lesson, so why not fire up the calculator? If you're screaming at me now going, why are you doing 18 times 3 on a calculator? Because I can. Okay? Right, my next number there is 54. All right, so there we go. There's 54. Show the positions and values of the first four terms in a table. All right, so what it's basically saying is when you want the terms and the position, you go T1, T2, T3, and T4. And then you've got the numbers 2, 6, 18 and 54. There is a table, but what am I going to use? Absolutely, I'm going to use my calculator. Why wouldn't I use my calculator? So in this situation, I only want the first four terms, so I'm going to delete those numbers there. What's my first number? Two. And as it turns out, because it's already got that common ratio of three, it's worked my values out. So there we go. There's another table. Use the table to plot the graph. I can do that. I'm going to hit control and right, and lo and behold, you'll notice my calculator has already done that. Now again, when you do these, if it's in an exam, they'll probably give you a grid or a graph uh, paper for you to actually draw that in accurately. All right, I don't actually have that with me at this moment in time, but if I wanted to show that slightly better, I'm gonna say window, zoom, and I'm gonna to zoom to the data, and it fits it nicely in there where it can. Describe the graph. Well, the graph is actually non-linear. All right, it's non-linear because that's how we describe graphs in general maths. If you've done the previous sections with regard to explanatory and response variables and scatter plots and all those type of things, you will know how to describe things as linear and non-linear. Cool, there we go. We're going well so far. All right, what about the next one? Consider the next geometric sequence. What have we got? 32, 16, and 8. Find the next term. What do you reckon? Well, 16 divided by 32. I know is a half. I'm just going to check is 8 divided by 16 and a half as well. Yes, it is. So my common ratio is equal to half. That means to get to the next term, I half the previous one. Oh, that's nice and easy. Half of 8 is in fact 4. ka -ching. Tick. Show the positions and values of the first four terms in the table. T1, T2, T3, T4. What have I got here? 32, 16, 8 and 4. Let's fire up my calculator again. Go back to this. Now, in this situation, my first term is 32, and what do you notice? Uh, multiplying all of those by 3. So I've got to change my formula. So I'm going to say equals b1, and I'm going to do multiply by a half. And there we go. We get 16. But you notice the other ones haven't changed. Why? Because I've got to copy that formula down. So I'm going to go menu, data, fill, down, down. Hit enter, and there we go. We get my table again. Now you're going to tell me to say, but this is a lot of hard work. I know. For these relatively simple questions, I'm showing you how you would then do this for, for much harder questions, yeah? Because as you work on exercises or questions, I would hope they're going to get harder, unless you've smashed this and you've got it. All right, so use the table to plot the graph. So fingers crossed now, if I go control and right, there we go. I get my nice, uh, let's do it for you curve that way down. All right. So describe the graph again. Well, again, it is non-linear, but could we describe it in a better way? Yes, it's non-linear and descending or a descending non-linear graph. Oh, we like that. So how could we go back to the previous graph? We could say non-linear and ascending. So let's write ascending there and non-linear and descending there. Now again, as time goes on, we get more specific with how we can describe these graphs. But there we go. Let's turn my calculator off so we're not covering the screen. Now things to note, yeah? When the common ratio is greater than one, then what we notice is the curve will be increasing. So what we notice here, I've got a common ratio of three and we notice the curve increases, right? It goes up. When the common ratio is less than one, so that's a decimal number or a fraction that's less than one. And in this situation, I had my common ratio of a third. We notice that actually the graph will be decreasing. And believe it or not, that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. It feels like a long one. 20 minutes again, shucks. But hopefully it's been a good 20 minutes. My name's Darren from MathsGuru. If you can, go to MathsGuru, download the load, sign up. It is absolutely free. YouTube, subscribe if you could. Seriously, it means an absolute world to me that people subscribe to my YouTube channel, TikTok. Um, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. All right, I'm going to take care and see you again soon. Bye-bye.